What's going on guys? In today's video, um, it's going to be a two-part video. I'm going to do reassembly of a 7.3 IDI, basically the same thing as a 6.9. I'll give you, you know, torque specs. I'll show you how to reassemble everything. Uh, just a couple of pointers. A video might be a little long, so I'm going to break it up into part one and part two. This, unlike the other videos, is not going to be full of goofy shit. <laughs> It's strictly going to be reassembly. I trust that you know how to disassemble, so off we go. So one of the main issues I had in disassembly for the heads was they're not getting easier to find and they're getting harder and harder to machine. A lot of places won't touch them because they're cast iron with Inconel um, inlays for the pre-cup. Um, these heads were remanned, so basically the valves fit the description of the valves that they're supposed to be on spec with 37 degree and valve seats and so on and so forth. But because it's a remand, these valves are actually oversized on the stem. Um, they're 15 thou over. So in order to get newer valves or Inconels or Stellites, I'd have to undersize the valve stem. Um, I'd go back to stock, and that would be a huge issue because these are getting harder to find. Um, and just increasingly more expensive. So we decided just to reface them and we're going to run them basically and see how they hold up to the heat. The second issue I ran into was all of the push rods were galled, every single one, and so were the rockers, but we can source new ones. And the third issue was the ring around the firing. Um, it just ate right into the head, so we had to get that resurfaced. It was not an easy task, but we got it done pretty much. All right, now let's move on to the water pump. Everything's been disassembled, you're reassembling, everything's cleaned up, it's ready to go. New water pump I sourced from Napa. It's a true flow, which is not a rebuild. It is a brand new, out of the box, true and true, came from the factory water pump. Um, there's a couple of different ones you can buy. This is the one I picked up. It's just the closest one, and I've used Napa stuff before, so I'm gonna stick with it. Um, you can get your own part number. I'm not gonna source part number for you. But anyway, back to the water pump. Now, uh, besides the normal, you know, housekeeping you do with putting a water pump on, just getting the uh, gasket surface off, making sure you got plenty of RVT, et cetera, et cetera. This does follow one um, very important step in which you should follow. So for one, here's a diagram of the steps, because there are four holes that need to be basically RVT or put some sort of thread sealant on it um, because there is an interchange between uh, where oil will flow and where water will flow. So they need to be sealed. So that's your list, screenshot it if you need to. Um, if you look at the pump, this is how it would be facing on the vehicle with a water neck here and a water neck here. The pump bolts which need, need to be thread sealed are this one, this one, that one, that one. So if you can kind of think of it, the two uppermost, two lowermost. What I like to do is just, this is a, <laughs> I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for this. This is Caterpillar Yellow. For some reason, the sepia tone on the phone's off. But I have a one water jacket, um, one neck off of the pump itself. The other one gets sealed. The pump will actually come with um, these two plugs if necessary. Um, so yeah, the two ones that need to be sealed are the two uppermost, closest to the injection pump housing, and the two below, which are the two harder to get ones, which isn't necessarily the truth. Um, we'll come with a gasket. I do use the gasket. Make sure that surface is absolutely clean because this is not the block surface. This is just a sheet metal facing that runs over it. So that's that on the water pump. Now on to the mechanical fuel pump. This pump itself in my application was not a bad pump. However, I don't believe in rebuilding an entire system and leaving the original mechanical fuel pump and reusing it. Um, it's two brands you can get that I found are good brands. There's Delphi and then there's Carter. People swear by Carter. Um, I've had Delphi pumps, i.e. this one, and never had a problem with it. There are two different type of uh, cantilever, I forget what they're called. Uh, it's just a rocker rod basically that rides on the camshaft to actuate this mechanical pump. Um, there's a redesign, so if you get the older ones, they don't look similar, but don't worry, they do match up. Uh, for this one, 
the longer one goes to your fuel bowl or fuel filter and your feed is the shorter one. Um, accessing this is rather easy. Uh, I believe it is two, let's take a peek, two nine six or me, they're either half inch or nine sixteenths. This one use a short uh, socket with a swivel because it does get hard to get in there. This one you can use just the standard socket, it will mount on there. Um, my feed line is here, so it's going to be simple routing. And then we're going to use not the hard line kit, but a braided line that goes up to the fuel bowl assembly. That's a very easy kit um, to get off R&D, rust, rust performance, or rust repair. Um, there's a whole bunch of people that sell it. Um, you can reuse the old one, but I mean, as I said, we're spending money. Don't spend money on fucking things that you think are going to fail as you're going along the road. Next. Oil cooler. If you pull your motor to rebuild it, very easy. If you do it in the truck, and I don't say rebuild like every single part, I'm saying just for the top end or what have you, where the block itself doesn't have to come out, you can pull it out now. It is way easier once you have the heads off. There are four, four bolts, I believe, on this side. There are three bolts on that side that secure this actually to the block. Um, there's two sets of very large O-rings on the inside. You can buy the entire remanufactured kit online. Um, you can even go to a parts store because most of them have it. Um, <laughs> with this, because if you can imagine the head comes out and the exhaust is right here, it is very close proximity to the exhaust manifold. This is an oil cooler. It should be cooling the oil. With the exhaust temperature is raising because we have a turbo on it now, I thought it would be a good idea to wrap the center carrier, which is basically just a um, big old tube with a whole bunch of little tubes running through. It's like a boiler um, with high temperature exhaust wrap. I'm gonna wrap the exhaust as well to try to mitigate the uh, heat transfer from the exhaust down to the cooler itself. So, after you get the deck surface prepared for the most part, you're gonna wanna run a tap down into all the thread galleys. God damn it. Get all the schmoo out of there. The tap for this is half inch 13. If you can get your hand on a long guy like this, it's gonna make your job a lot easier. You get a tap handle too. Don't use a 5 16 wrench like me. Top tip. All right, so it's head stabbing in time. First things first, get yourself a good head gasket. I got a uh, Pros. These are just the regular Permatorque ones. Good head gasket. They're a little thicker too. Considering we're putting the turbo on there, we can buy as much room as possible. That's what we need. Lessen that compression up. But solid head gasket, a little bit thicker. Uh, part number for this boy is this right here. All the information. Now, for this side, you have this, this, this. These three, what I'll do is I'll install into the head, and then I'll zip tie around the necks of them so they're up like this, nice and proud. That way when I install it, I can actually get these in here, because if you can tell, without pulling the airbox, it's going to be a tight fit to get the rest of these guys in. Make sure mating surface is all cleaned up nice. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to be flat. I like to go around to the bottoms especially and blow out all the holes with compressed air because sometimes when you lift the heads, you chase them out. Not only is there shit in there, but there could be coolant and oil and all that. Once you start torquing these head bolts down, you don't want the hydraulic effect in the bottom of this thread channel to basically form cracks. Then you're gonna be screwed, you're out of block. So, let me get the first cylinder head dressed, and ready to go on, and I'll show you the steps. So here's the three on the passenger side. Put some zip ties in it. To keep them from bottoming out. Ta -da. Let's put it in. All right, now that you got your cylinder head in, which is possible to do by hand, but I definitely recommend using an engine crane to lower this shit in but anyway the ones i have or you probably will get if you get the uh 
not the studs, but just the regular bolts, 12 point half inch. You start, it's easier I just throw this right here. That's the pattern you go, first is 65, and then you just work your way up. It is imperative that you tension these down correctly. Have a good torque wrench, not a shitty Harbor Freight one like mine. <laughs> I ever see you anywhere near my house i'll blow your head off but i'm gonna bolt everything down get it secured and then we'll work on the other head all right now for this side the head bolts you're going to want to keep inside the cylinder head as you bring it in are the absolute last one on the bottom row this bottom row here because there's two bottom rows there's absolute bottom and there's secondary two bottom right here and then there's the uppermost row so the two back ones in the corner you want to keep those in everything else you can drop right in keep in mind my truck's a little bit different than some other trucks because i've deleted some stuff and this truck practically doesn't come with a whole lot of accessories and like i said and you can tell i'm out of breath Everything can be done one person. You don't need a cherry picker. You can lower them in. Just be damn fucking positive that you don't nick the head gaskets as you're lowering shit in. You nick a head gasket, you're going to think to yourself, well, you know, it's, it's going under 100 foot pounds. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be good. And it's not necessarily the case. You nick a center section on a head gasket, it's already bad before you even torque it down. Let me torque down this side, and then we'll go from there. All right, so valley pan intake. It's relatively straightforward. The valley pan itself, um, I put a light coat RVT on it. There's four bolts in the front with a retainer. So you want to run that retainer in, torque it down. Put the valley pan in, you just lay it down. I put a gob of RVT on the front and back. Like on the rear, you really have to lay it in. There's a drain that is a 3 8 ratchet. We'll tighten it down. It's like a little hex. And then the intake or the drain for the turbo. You can use a stock one, but you have to trim it down like, I don't know, to about an inch height um, to allow for the turbo if you ran naturally aspirated before. If not, you can just buy the kit. It's really not a big deal. Um, everything else, just torque and alignment. Um, if you go to nickpicasa.com uh, that I listed earlier, it will show you the torque pattern. It's not a big deal. Um, it's not very hard. So just go in line with that. You'll torque the valley pan down. Now here's with the turbo. The up pipe itself has a T3 slash T4 flange. Um, get that bolted up to a degree. Um, I found the easiest way is to line it in from the top down, not go from the flange up through the bottom. You are gonna have to cut the firewall to a degree to get the sucker in. It is a pain in the ass. Now here's the bottom. The bottom up, bolt it in, and as you can see, it is extremely tight. So you are gonna have to cut the firewall, do a little bit of banging, see what you can do to get the sucker in. The hard part's gonna be getting a three inch down, or exhaust down pipe, whatever you wanna call it into there but it is going to require some firewall fabrication so be forewarned um but besides that no donuts no nothing um get the crossover pipe i listed in my other video all right so on the turbo in a second i'm going to insert some filler content just to have some voiceover so basically because i took the turbo apart um rebuilt everything in it i don't have the proper clock direction. The exhaust goes a certain way, the center section goes a certain way, and the intake goes a certain way. So what you basically want to do is take everything apart, loosen it, loosen the exhaust se section, loosen the intake section, fit it in on the flange, and kind of rotate everything where it needs to be in place. The intake hat and intake itself has to be pretty damn close, and the center section has to be right on the money because it bolts to the intake side and it also has to drain into that valley pan that we talked about earlier. So take this chance while the up pipe is bolted on and you don't have the injection lines or anything on to kind of rotate everything into center section where it needs to be. That way when you have everything bolted in and the turbo is the last step, you can basically just drop it in, bolt it on and be done with it. 
So take a couple of minutes, test fit everything, and be done with it. Um, I'm going to insert some video of me just kind of adjusting things, and we'll go from there. So once you have the turbo clocked in exactly where it needs to be, you're pretty much set. You can insert the injection pump and start on everything else that needs to be done. The next video that I'm going to do is going to be the timing, the injection pump. We're going to fire this up. I'll show you how to properly bleed it. Um, all the steps basically to get this thing going uh, where it needs to be. The injection pump on my side is pretty much set. So... Um, like I said, next video, we'll get everything going and we'll fire it up for the first time. So I'm pretty excited. So stick around for part two and we'll go. All right, guys, I hope you learned something. Uh, stick around for part two. We're going to fire this thing up. It's been a long time in coming. <laughs> Trust me. Um, I want to get this truck to the mud box, uh, 2022. So if you got any comments, um, questions, so on and so forth, leave it at the bottom. And as always, like and subscribe. We'll put out more content. <laughs> She lives and she's out of the shop. Oh boy.